Hello, my name is Riker, and today I'm going to talk about what I think is an under-discussed topic in 3D printing, and that is the AMS unit. The AMS unit, or Automatic Material System, was released by Bamboo Lab when they first released the X1 and X1C 3D printers. It has since become a very popular way to make multicolor prints, and is super useful if you're trying to make support material with PETG for your PLA prints. So let's talk about it. I've noticed a lot that other companies are trying to make their own better version of the AMS machine, like Anycubic released their Cobra 3 combo, which included the Ace Pro, which I'm not sure what that stands for, but I know it works the same way as an AMS. Other companies are trying to capitalize on the success that the Bamboo Labs AMS unit is having. But even though there's a lot of good that comes with printing like this, there can be some bad because you're trying to fit a lot of filament through one nozzle and there's a lot of retractions happening. Let's start with the pros. Accessibility is a big point to make because the more people that have a unit like this, the more popular it can become. Bamboo Lab is making it really accessible by making it an add-on to all of their 3D printers. You could get an AMS unit for any 3D printer you have. If you have an A1 Mini, A1, P1P, X1, they have an AMS unit for anything you could possibly need. This means that the more people have it, the more popular it's going to become because more people will hear about it. And when more people have it, that brings me to my next topic, which is ease of use. If you don't like a product, it's not going to get very big. Or I should say, if most people don't like a product. It's very easy and straightforward to use. All you need to do is put four colors into this machine, and it'll correspond with whatever filament you have painted on your model. It works great for support material, any sort of multicolor you could possibly want, and can work with up to 16 colors. And it works most of the time flawlessly, which makes it very good for beginners and people just getting into multicolor printing. The next thing that makes these units really popular is the cost. Any Cupic is selling it for $100 if you get the Cobra 3 with it. Bamboo Lab sells it for $250 if you get any printer with it. And if you buy it standalone, it's like $350. Multicolor printing, you used to have to drop like five grand just to get any sort of multicolor printing. Now even good multicolor printing costs like a hundred bucks to $350, like I just said. Which makes it, again, more accessible for people to buy and people to use, which makes it a bigger product and which makes it more successful. Some of the problems people have with 3D printing with this is time and speed. That's a really big one. It can add hours onto your 3D prints to just print like two colors, let alone four color models that are like really big. Because of the time and speed factor, most people don't do multicolor 3D prints as often, but more leans toward type of filament changes, like support material. The next one that kind of relates to it is waste. When you're trying to switch filament every single layer up to four times, it's got to do something with the filament left in the nozzle, so it poops it out the back. This can create hundreds of grams of waste for even like 5 gram objects, which is not great for people unless you have tons of filament just hanging out. Another thing that people have had a problem with, but I personally haven't, is filament jams. It tends to jam right at the back where they come out, but I, I've had this AMS unit for almost a year and haven't had a single problem with it. And now I've got an AMS light back here too. Both of them run really smoothly and I've not had a jam, ever. Some people don't like the limited materials you can use. You can't use TPU in here. You can use like PLA, you can use PETG. I'm pretty sure you can use tougher materials like nylon. You just need harder gears in there. But it's a little bit restrictive because you don't want to tear up the inside and you don't want jams. So as long as you know what you're looking for, it's not that big of a deal. And size of spools. If you're printing in the regular AMS unit, you cannot use cardboard spools. You cannot use mini spools and you cannot use and you cannot use too wide of spools. These spools could jam the AMS, they could just get stuck, they don't fit, the rollers don't roll, but there are some fixes, and I'm just about to go over them. If you're trying to combat waste and time, one of the things I like to change is the purge multiplier. I put mine to 0.6%. This means per layer, mine will poop 60% of what it normally does, which is which can save lots of time and lots of filament. One of the main ways you can stop jams from happening in your AMS units is by learning what materials they can handle. If it's too soft to handle like nylon, don't put nylon in it. None of them can handle TPU because it's like feeding a wet noodle through a straw. It just won't work. It'll get jammed, it'll clunk stuff up, it's bad. Once you understand what filaments you can use and you just stick to those filaments, most likely it's not going to jam, but sometimes it's just unstoppable, like if your material gets chewed up by the gear. And for the sizes of spools and types of spools, they have a mod called the Hydra Mod. I can make a video going over it. It's basically a base plate that sits inside and makes it wider and also makes it a little softer so the cardboard spools don't get torn up. It also makes it, I think they have one that makes it do mini spools too. 
I'll link it down below, and if you want, I can make a video going over it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.